Hi folks, it's a lovely summer's day, so we're going to change the front brake pads and front brake discs on this Vauxhall Sephira B. Keep watching. Right, the last time this car went for an MOT test, the uh, instructor or inspector, should I say, went to show Gary that uh, the disc were, were they wear, what was it, the, the pads were wearing unevenly, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna just take a look at this now and just see what the problem is. And also, while we're there, we might as well change the discs and the pads at the same time. So first things first, we're gonna do the wheel nut, jack the car up, and then we'll carry on from there. So we'll see you in a minute. Right, so all we're gonna do here is, first of all, we're gonna lo loosen the wheel nuts on this. And uh, you wanna do that while it's on the floor, because otherwise, your wheels are just going to spin as you try to put leverage on them. So on these Vauxhall Sephiras, you've got little plastic wheel caps that sit over the top of the actual wheel nut. So don't think that you've got the wrong socket. I think there's a 17mm socket on uh, the wheel nuts here. And also jack up the car in a safe place and don't rely on just your jack or trolley jack or scissor jack, whatever you've got there. Make sure you get an axle stand put under one of the support rails underneath and uh, obviously dropping the trolley jack down onto that. You don't want to cause any damage here. Safety first, don't forget. Right, okay, so we've got the wheel off now and the problem which we've got here is that the pads apparently aren't wearing evenly. The one at the, this side on the uh, piston, is it the piston side? Yeah, the piston yeah. side is uh, a lot thinner than the one on this side, so we've got to sort that out as well. So what we've got to do first of all is to take off the caliper because we're going to be changing the disc as well we've got the caliper to come off we've got the caliper carrier to come off and then we've got a screw in the uh, front of the uh, disc itself which uh, we've got to undo and then we can pull the disc off we need to hang the caliper up because we don't want to damage the pipe work so be careful don't let the caliper dangle down so first of all we've got two bolts that are under these little rubber tubes here so we've got these two little caps that pull out the back here one top and one bottom, and there's these little rubber tubes there, as you can probably see. Oh, we should have a seven mil Allen key. Now, ideally, you want the uh, proper socket-headed bolts that go through there, but uh, I don't know how tight these are gonna be. So I'm just gonna get a spanner on there, because I haven't got me Allen keys in the socket form here. There we go, so this is just a little cheap way to use a spanner. If you haven't got a proper socket with a, we've got eight and six, but I haven't got a seven mil one. So we're just going to zip these off, top and bottom. This is the top one, obviously. The bottom one's down there. I'm going to get them loose first before we go any further. Right, so let me just zip these off and we'll be back with you. Right, so these are the two bolts there, which I've just taken out, which are the seven mil angle bolts. Yep. So at the front here, we've got this uh, little spring. So I'm just going to leave that out. Be careful, you don't want this to ping out and hit you in the face. So just make a note of the way it goes on, as you can see long bit goes behind the back there and comes around and pins into these little alcoves there so let me just withdraw that one of the things we're going to do is to clean this caliper right up because uh, all this brake dust and all that can cause squealing which we've had squealing problems with these brakes anyway okay so technically speaking we've got that out now okay so we just hopefully now should be able to lever this off but you can see this is really caked up with crud there so I can see all the dust around these. You can see this is why these, these things get stuck. I think it's just struggling to get over the lip on the disc, that's all. That pad's sliding out, look. There we go. Right, well, okay, let's uh, just undo that little clip there because the uh, ABS sensor runs through the back there. Now what we're going to do, we're going to tie this up. So we're just going to get some string and we'll tie this up. Right, okay, so we've hung the caliper up there. These are only short rubber hoses. You've got to be very careful you don't put stress on them because if you get cracks in them, then it's an MOT failure. So we've got one of the pads still stuck in the caliper here because that actually clips inside. If you can see that, there's prongs on the back of this actually sit inside the actual piston itself. So that one stays with the caliper. And I don't know if you can see there how that this pad here is actually broken up and it's actually worn unevenly as well. So that's the one at the piston side, as you can see there. And this is the one on the uh, front side here, and that literally just lifts off. And as you can see, total difference there in thickness. So there's been definitely uneven wear in there. So that's the reason why 
uh, this was an advisory on the MOT but we're going to change the disc as well because we've got quite a big lip on them as well so uh, best to do it in one go all we've got now is the caliper bolts uh, the caliper holders to take off now that requires an 18 mil socket right so I've got the 18 mil socket I'm just going to get my breaker bar on there makes life a little bit easier if you've got one of these and it will be tight there we go once we get them moving we should be okay and I'm not use my socket ratchet on him so handy to have a breaker bar because uh, in the old days I used to just hit on one of these ratchets and that's not what they're designed for even though these ones have got a lifetime guarantee and you can take and get to be, get changed but uh, I don't do that anymore I'll say that you'll probably caught me on a video where I've done it and don't forget these uh, bolts here should be thread locked back on again I've done a friend's car not so long back where he had someone who uh, had changed the brake calipers and uh, put new brake calipers on the back of his car for him and he came around for me to do a little bit of welding for him and uh, he had a clonk in he said at the back and what it was was that the, the chap who'd done the brake calipers had put copper slip grease on the bolts instead of a lock fr thread lock on the bolts retaining the calipers one of them had come right out and been lost and the other one was literally hand tight so I literally noticed that and saved the catastrophe so just make sure you've got the right stuff before you do these sort of jobs not worth taking chances with right there you go so that's the two 18 mils out and as you see so that's that we're now going to undo the yes it is an allen key looks like a five mil maybe or four mil is that a five mil it appears to be just undo that shouldn't be very tight that anyway so just loosen it off sometimes they fall off and sometimes you have to give them a little tap off but in this case as you can see woof off it comes and that literally is it so that is your disc there that one's we're going to replace with a brand new one there's the disc retaining pole but before we do that we're going to go along we're going to clean up all these calipers all this here is all going to be cleaned up and we've also got to push the piston back in i don't think you widen these ones back in i think we're just going to be able to get away with using the clamp so we're just going to do that now we'll see you in a minute before we reassemble yes. right okay so we clean the caliper up now or the caliper holder we've got these pins as well i don't know if you can see there there's all that sort of skunk around the top of the pins there so we're going to give them a clean up as well just literally with a wire brush just to scrape them off because they go inside the rubber boots there and uh, we're going to also put a little bit of copper slip inside them as well just to make sure things lubrication so these pins are or the rubber seals ain't chafing on these pins at all right okay then so what we've got now is we've got the caliper which is really fully out and unlike the back ones on these ones you can just press these ones in with a G clamp there's no need to wind these ones in so I've just got a G clamp set up there uh, don't worry about this rim if this this outer edge of the rubber seal has got some sort of corrosion on it you haven't really got to clean that because when you push the caliper back in the actual rubber seal doesn't that doesn't sort of go inside and damage the ball basically because the rubber seal actually sits in a groove just below that so that never gets inside so don't worry about that so i'm just going to wind this caliper back now and as you can see just wind it in gently and it's going going in nicely now technically speaking you shouldn't need your cap off uh, for the simple reason being is you're just putting the fluid back out of the caliper back into the um, reservoir again not unless of course it was low at some stage and you've actually topped it up in which case when you was winding like this it would come to a solid stop if the color if the fluid hit the top of the lid and uh, that's not happening here it's going back in nicely so as you can see we're virtually back in now and I think that's about as far as I need to go there we go so that's right back in there now I'm real happy with that we'll take that out of the way now the new pads as you know and there's the one with the clip on the back of it so uh, let's just undo these and what people tend to do is to just put some lube on the back of these to stop squealing or squeaking 
Um, I personally have never realised why, but <laughs> I'm going to put it on anyway, just around the edge. And this is copper slip grease, as you know. And this one we're going to sit inside the caliper. And it should just push in and clip in, and you should be okay to go, good to go. So that's that one actually installed. Right, this is our new disc, and like a lot of new discs, when you get them, don't just fully just install them, because a lot of them have got this oil, oily residue on them. Some of them are painted silver, but some of them are coated in a protective film. And all you need is some brake cleaner and a clean rag, and make sure you get all that grease off, otherwise you're gonna be back to square one. Do both sides, don't forget. Right, okay, you should be good to go. Right, okay, for this, as you can see, because I'm handling this clean item now, I've put my gloves on. Should have done it right at the very beginning. And just make sure you line up your little uh, hole, which is there. At the front. <laughs> just, <laughs> just make sure you line up your little hole. Times I've done that, put it on back to the front. Never mind. Where is it now? There it is. There we go, like that with our little screw, which is there, like this, and just give it a little nip up. Right, okay, that's that. So we're happy with that. We will just grease up the back of this side as well, not too much on there, just spread it about a bit. There we go, just taking the residue off there like we have done. Around there, we don't need it. And we've got that clip on this one now, I think this is actual wear indicator, as you can see there. So uh, that's gonna drop back in there when we put that back on. Right, okay, so now we've, we've cleaned all this up, as you can probably see. And uh, I'm gonna just put some copper slip grease in the little channels there. These are the little channels where the end of the pads rest upon. And again, don't go too mad with this, just, uh, just enough for some general lubrication. Like that. And that should aid the pads moving in and out. So just wipe my finger down there. So I've got my caliper bolts there. And uh, all I'm going to do is just to put a bit of this uh, thread lock on them. Just to ensure that they don't come undone. Right, so now we've done that. We just lay this back in place. Right, so we're just going to slide the caliper holder in place over the top of the disc. Relocate them bolts and I'll just zip these up and I'll see you in a minute. All right, that's great. So let's just uh, get that caliper down now. And I'm going to get my other brake pad as well and just sort of tease that into position on here before I actually fit it. So one sits in the actual caliper head and one fits in there like that. So that's what I'm looking for there. And if I push the disc in enough, it should just fall back into place as it has done there. All that leaves now then is my two little pins to put back into the rubber bushings there. And I'll just help them along the way with a little bit of copper slip grease just on the shafts there. And this isn't going on the threads as you know, as I've said to you, earlier on this is going on the actual metal shaft that runs through the rubber boot so to speak we've cleaned all the crap off of that now so hopefully this will allow them to not stick anymore so we'll just zip up these uh seven mil allen keys and the job should be a good one Right, you're gonna love this. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll see that I've ordered parts many times from Euro car parts, and I've always had hassle and problems with them. <sighs> Everything was going too smooth here. I'll just show you, I'll show you for why. You've seen the installation go as per plan, everything's gone on there, but whilst I was putting the caliper on, I thought something's wrong here. They're not seating correctly. So I've had a good look round, and the only conclusion I can come to is something is wrong. This obviously looks all all right. And the only other variable which we got here is this here. So this is the old disc which we got. 
This is the new disc from Euro Car Parts. If I just stick that on there, can you see the overlap all the way around? Look, they've given us the wrong disc. So yet again, Euro Car Parts have buggered up what is supposed to have been a simple job. We had all the parts here. They said it was in stock. We went and picked these up last Saturday. So yet again, we've had another problem with Euro Car Parts now. And I've now got to take this all off again now to get that disc off. And then we've got to go all the way for, to Lincoln, 20 or so miles there, 20 or so miles back to go and get the correct discs. Happy days. I'll let you know what goes on when we've actually phoned them back. Right, well, here we are. We're at Euro Car Parts now, so we're just going to go in. We're going to find out what they're going to say about changing these discs over. Apparently they said that they've got the bigger ones and just bring these ones back. So we'll let you know if we can get some sort of discount. I don't think so. I don't think they're like that. Right. It's an hour and a half later. We've been that back to Euro Car Parts. I'll tell you about that at the end. I'm not going to tell you about it now. I don't want to wind myself up. These are the now the right discs. They are bigger. They, they were two. Were they 280 the other 280. ones? Weren't they? And these are 308, 308s or something. And Euro Car Parts were unwilling to give us any sort of compensation. All he said I can do is to give you your money back because these ones were actually 17 pounds dearer, and he weren't in no way. He said he wasn't in no way position to give us any sort of uh, compensation for the hassle that they caused or whatever. The bottom line is, is that he said, I said, I've had trouble with you a lot before. And he said, well, I thought it was a franchise. He said, they're not a franchise. You have to phone up their actual customer service help desk, which is all part of their big organisation. So from where you've got the problem, whatever store you've got a problem with, you're then taken away to a, a global, or not global, a, a national customer help care centre who have got no direct information about the situation you've been involved with. So there's no compassion. And that's one of the biggest things you'll find with big corporate companies like Euro Car Parts. We've walked out of there again and we're frustrated that their website wasn't uh, updated correctly. And also they wasn't un they were totally unwilling to give us any compensation. There's no no fault of the chap behind the counter. As you said, there's nothing he could do. His hands are tied. I did ask to speak to someone who was in authority to be able to help us out uh, with regards to the compensation. He said, well, I am that person. He said, but there's nothing I can do because we have to just resort you, revert you over to the customer service help team, which is nothing to do with the local shop which you're dealing with. Anyway, I want to pass on now. I'm fed up with cus I'm fed up with blinking. What are they called? Euro car, Euro car parts every time and if you've got a comment I said this the reason why I told him I make YouTube videos and stuff and he said well there's nothing really I can do I said well I will be reporting all this in my YouTube video I said and hoping that somewhere down the line your customer care service will tend to look at these comments and actually do something about it I says because by the comments I've seen people leave nothing happens so let's just see if it does happen and let's just see how many other people have had another similar experience like I've had in the past which I've actually recorded on my videos let's get going i want to get this jump and we've got to get the other side finished you won't see that one but the job's virtually done now all i've got to do is to put on this spring clip and tighten up the caliper and everything is as it should be now and this spring clip just goes behind the where is it that way right all right okay so that's that clip in now everything's rotating as it should be i'm just going to tighten up these uh caliper bolts and if you can probably see here hold on let's get this straight again those what we didn't have on the last disc was these wear indicators so basically that little thing there would rub against the disc and probably cause a bit of a noise when the disc get down to a certain level and there you go that's the job done there now we've just got to put the road wheel on and everything should be back to normal we'll pump the pedal a few times so if you do that now Gary just to make sure that the pistons go out and release yeah let go off on yeah that's fine and those pins being lubricated is obviously doing the job now because i can see that everything's coming on and coming off it's only a slight movement but that's all you need to have right that's it job done right okay that's it then so i'll leave it there with this one been a right pain euro car parts but we got there in the end so again if you've had any problems so if, for customer service to reach out and actually start doing something leave some comments below and let's hope that their customer service can get a lot better so one thing to note though if you have got a Vauxhall Sephira B like this what model is this one Gary yeah 08. it's an 08 model they do two sizes discs for this a 280 and a 308 so do make sure that you get the right disc uh, when you go 
It's on the website now apparently, but it should have been at the top, the two different sizes, but apparently it scrolled right down the bottom, the second size, which is obviously why uh, Gary missed it. So if you order them online, that is a problem. If you go in the shop, they may tell you that. So just something to be aware of, two sizes of discs. Anyway, thanks very much. I hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next video. And if you like our videos, do share them and we'll see you in next time. Bye for now.